Matrix type video. I did one of these a long time ago and it went down really, really well, so I thought it was about time to do another one. You may have already heard of some of them, but I did try to like delve deep into my brain and pick out anything that I feel like I haven't um, put this on my teeth. Cool. <laughs> um, so I haven't shared with you guys before. So hopefully it's something new and exciting for you. There is a very high chance that I will have lipstick on my teeth at some point, if not many points throughout this video. So if I do, just bear with me, I will eventually notice. <laughs> but first, I'm going to start off with eyebrows. And I'm not going to do this in any particular order, I'm just going to go for it. Recently, I've noticed that I am unable to use brow powder on its own, whereas before, I honestly think I had, as far as I can remember, I had no issues with it. It just gave me the look that I wanted, no problems, that's it. Um, I've always been using the Sigma Medium Brow Powder, Little Duo, and I use both shades. Now, I found that I fill in the majority of my eyebrow with a lighter shade, and I had to use the darker shade to give me some precision in, like, the corner, or not the corner, the, um, what's it called? The arch, the arch, <laughs> which eventually ended up meaning that my eyebrows got darker and darker and darker because I was using more and more to try and get a lot of precision. And yes, I know I have a big mark here. It's gross. I managed to burn myself very severely with a curling wand, so that was fun. <laughs> that led me to think, well, how can I get around that? How can I get around um, giving my eyebrows a lot of uh, precision and a really crisp, crisp line? I've noticed sometimes it's easy for brows to look like they're very uh, kind of softly filled in and kind of just like you've used a very thick eyeshadow brush to fill them in. They really have like a defined border, if that makes sense. And as obvious as this will sound, it's honestly like saves my life <laughs> dramatic much, but I'm feeling really good about how my eyebrows look. Um, as of recently, I just, this technique has been foolproof for me and it's not even really a technique, it's just uh, using certain products. So the first products that I've had sitting in my drawers for absolutely forever that I've only recently pulled out is the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Brow Color in the shade Medium. Now this is just a little felt tip um, pen, similar to a, pretty much identical to a liquid liner. And the reason this works so amazingly is because, as obvious as it is, it gives you a really clean, crisp line. So what I like to do is fill in my eyebrows with an eyebrow powder first, do all of like the, you know, the base um, um, and just worry about the edges afterwards because I don't like filling my whole eyebrow with this. I find that it looks too drawn on because it is uh, you know, it's a liquid and it's kind of like a texture. You kind of just draw your eyebrows up. When you use it just at the tail end of your eyebrows, you use like a really perfect defined kind of um, yeah, tail. And then when you use it again in the arch, you just get a very, very clean, crisp brow. And there's nothing better than a clean, crisp brow. Um, the other product you can use is something similar to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomad in Blonde. I actually don't really use this much anymore. I only use it if I need my brows to like stay on, like if I'm swimming or something. But I just find that this one um, can get a little bit, I don't know, it's not that easy to work with because it's a cream product and sometimes it gets a little bit dry. Um, it can kind of form little balls and you have to keep on brushing it through. And I don't know, it's a lot harder to work with, I found, than this baby. So if you are having problems um, achieving like a really nice clean crisp brow and you just can't seem to make it work or if you're sick of having to you know define your brows using concealer this is incredible. I love it. <laughs> the next tip is to do with false lashes and it's actually something that I've learned through trial and error. I always love to have like big kind of doll eyes and sometimes when you're going out and you're going clubbing you kind of get excited and you think oh I'm going to choose like the longest thickest, darkest lashes because they're going to look the most dramatic and they're going to, you know, give me the effect that I want and they're going to make my eyes look bigger and sexier and more sultry or whatever. But for me, they always seem to work the opposite, basically. So my little tip is to avoid lashes that look like this and go for lashes that look like this if you are after the illusion of bigger eyes, regardless of your eyeshadow choice. So regardless of if you're going for like a smoky eye, like a black smoky a really soft brown smoky eye or no eyeshadow at all. I find that these lashes here, <laughs> these are the Red Cherry 138s, these are amazing because even though they're not necessarily very thick, because they are spidery and they're long and they're kind of dark. 
expiry lashes <laughs> really make your eyes appear much more open. That's why sometimes I actually prefer how my eyeshadow looks on the whole face look without lashes because sometimes lashes just completely kill the look, make my eyes look really small. It's kind of like the same thing as um, eyeliner for me. I think eyeliner makes my eyes look much smaller sometimes um, because it kind of blocks off the space between my roots of my lashes, my eyelid, and then my crease. I feel like the more space I have between the root of my lashes and my crease, I get that's kind of like unobstructed, <laughs> um, the bigger my eyes look. So when I've got these, you still kind of see that space, but these it's completely blocked out, so my eyes look much smaller. The next little tip is to do with lips. So I have a very particular way of lining my lips, and I get a lot of questions about if I've had my lips done again. Um, I haven't. I just line my lips in a very protective way, I like to think. So I use a lip liner that is pretty much the same shade as my lip. Maybe a little bit darker when I kind of layer it, it does look quite a bit darker. But if I just quickly line it, it's pretty much the same colour as my lip. So I like the size of my bottom lip, but my top lip is quite a bit thinner than my bottom lip. So obviously now it's pretty much the same because I've overdrawn my lips because I'm wearing a black lip colour. But normally, yeah, it's a little bit thinner. So what I like to do is just simply line the outer corners of my lips. I try to bring the lip liner past about here and I just keep it on the outer corners. And then when I go to line my upper lip, I overdraw the corners as well. So I'm basically making the top lip as thick or as big as the bottom 